Hello, it is Saturday, June 17th, 2023. Take three. Well, not really take three, but third video I'm releasing this morning. It's been an incredibly busy time for me with my business, so during the week I don't have a lot of time to to release things. So he's he's releasing so many things of revelations to me right now, but I just haven't had time to press into them like I would like to. Um, but I want to release something in regards to the day of vengeance and pray that it would open some things up and just see some things in a different perspective. Um, the day of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, what that looks like. Um, and I'm not going to try and present every aspect of that, but I want to see you to see a certain perspective of that. So in... Isaiah chapter 61, which Christ quoted this when he went into the synagogue and presented, him, presented himself as Messiah. And he quoted out of Isaiah chapter 61, he says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And that's the seven spirits of God of, of Isaiah chapter 11 resting upon him. Does that mean... It's more than just having the gift of Holy Spirit. It's that revelation resting upon you, meaning you've come into the full revelation of who you are. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart to preach deliverance to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's where Jesus stopped and shut the book or closed the scroll, right? He stopped there, like mid-sentence, mid to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, what comes after that, and the day of vengeance of our God. See, Christ's ministry was three and a half years from the time the Spirit of the Lord rested upon him. <laughs> he came into the fullness of sonship. When he was baptized, the Father said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And from that time on, his ministry was three and a half years till the time he was cut off. And offered himself up the sacrifice where he performed the mercy. So that period of three and a half years. There's another period of three and a half years and where the day of vengeance of our God is performed. And that is Christ manifesting himself through a people, a remnant people who have overcome and have come and come into the fullness of of who they are in oneness with him. So the day of vengeance of our God is going to be fulfilled. Christ is going to fulfill it as he comes in. The king of glory comes in, Malachi, into his temple and manifests this glory of himself through a people. We see this in... 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse like 7, 8, where he says, When he shall come, um, when the Lord shall come from heaven with his angels, in flaming fire, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let me, let me start there. In flaming fire, okay. <laughs> In flaming fire, taking vengeance on, on them that know not. Who, 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 know, who doesn't know God? The son of perdition. Your old, the false identity. Taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus. What's the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ? It's good news. You didn't obey, so boom. No, it's, it's deeper than that. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Taking vengeance on the false identity. 
taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel. What's this gospel? By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. Who, those who obey not the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ are not just like unbelievers. They're, they're, even, they're even those that are trying to do it in their own strength in the religious well, realm, right? They're, they're, they're self-justified. They're self-righteous. To obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is by grace am I saved through faith. That doesn't mean there's not consecration. That doesn't mean there's separation. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you come into the fullness of your identity in him by faith, you will walk it out. Yes, there is a sanctification. Yes, you have to be resolute. You have to come out from this world and not be schooled by the world, but be schooled by Holy Spirit. Be taught by the Spirit to come into the full revelation of who you are. There is a sanctification process in that. There is an agreement that you have to come into agreement with the truth of who he says you are. But this day of vengeance of our God, when Jesus read from the scroll of Isaiah chapter 61. Think about the context of that. Isaiah 61 is right after Isaiah 60. What's Isaiah 60? Arise, shine, for your light has come. The full revelation of Christ has risen upon you. His spirit is resting upon you. That's Christ coming in to his temple, Christ in you, the hope of glory, and manifesting himself out of that. So right after Isaiah 60, we have Isaiah 61, where it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. That's the same Spirit that Christ said was upon him that's now going to be also upon the manifest sons. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to meek. meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, captives and opening the prison of them to the bound, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What's that? Jubilee, your debt is paid. It's paid in my blood. I paid the price for you to be reconciled to the Father, to be seated in heavenly places, to find your rest, to find your healing under the shadow of his wings that are overshadowing the mercy seat. By grace are you saved through faith. This is the jubilee that our debt is paid, that his blood was sufficient to cover our sin. It's twofold. We receive of his mercy, but we also have to come into agreement with the truth as we allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and come into the fullness of the revelation of who we are. So Jesus says, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, and he stopped there. Because the second half of the seven-year period, three and a half years was his ministry, where he fully performed the mercy. He shed his blood at the cross so that we could be reconciled back to the Father. But for the fullness of our identity must come in upon us as the Spirit rests upon us, as the revelation of the Holy Spirit brings forth the revelation of who we are. And then the second half of the week, he is going to manifest himself, the King of Glory, through this vessel that have overcome. How? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Proverbs 16, 6. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. That's the second half of the week of Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. That's a deeper revelation that I'm not going to go into right now, but Christ performed the first three and a half years. And the day of vengeance of our God is going to be fulfilled in the second half of that week, three and a half years, a week of years. The day of vengeance of our God 
is going to be exercised through a people who have overcome. And now they, ha they are granted an authority to execute judgment on that which they have overcome. They have overcome the old man. They have overcome the son of perdition, this false identity. The truth of Christ is fully risen upon them and manifest out of them. Because as Isaiah 16, 5 says, in mercy, the throne is established. That's a seed in heavenly places through the mercy, through the shed blood of Christ. In mercy, the throne is established, and he, who's he? Speaking of Jesus, the King of glory. And he shall sit upon it in truth. That's Christ in you. He inhabits a revelation of himself. And he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. That's the day of vengeance of our God. Hasting righteousness. People coming into the righteousness of Christ through the shed blood of Christ. That's the entrance of entering into who we are. So the day of vengeance of our God, of course, is going to be fulfilled in a three and a half year period. And just as Isaiah 61 here is quoted on right after Isaiah 60, Arise, shine, for your light has come, because the day of vengeance is going to be fulfilled through this people. As Isaiah 59 says, which is right prior to Isaiah 60, says what? The enemy shall come in like a flood. It's going to bring a flood of deception, and, and, and in that there's going to be a falling away. Those are going to fall back unto perdition the son of destruction, the false identity. They're going to fall back from standing in Christ and, and having some measure of abiding in him, of believing in the power of his blood, and they're going to fall away from that and come back to the old man, the son of perdition. There's only two, there's only two identities. Either you're in the son of perdition or the son of God. You're putting away the old man, the son of perdition. No, that's not who I'm not, I am. I'm not the son of destruction. I'm in Christ. We are not them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of soul. So it means you can draw back. You can fall away from the faith, from believing who you really are, and fall back into the worldly mind, the carnal mind, the religious mind, the self-righteous mind, the prideful mind. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Second Thessalonians, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the tearing down of strongholds, bringing, casting down every argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, of who he is, who you are, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, to the mind of Christ, to the truth of who you are, who he is and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, being renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then what does it say? And having a readiness to punish, that's the day of vengeance, and having a readiness to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. When you've overcome that, you now have an authority there. And so those who have fully overcome and are caught up to the throne as the man-child 
are given an authority to execute vengeance on that which they've overcome. They've overcome the son of perdition. Because they come into this fullness of the revelation by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, the truth coming into agreement with who they are. So back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. It says, When the Lord shall be revealed from heaven in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that know not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he shall come to appear, where? In his saints. When he shall come to appear in his saints. In his saints. That's Isaiah 60. The day of vengeance is executed through a people who have become, who have overcome, and their authority and their power is to execute that vengeance on the old man, on the son of perdition. And this is what we see in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where it says, And then that wicked shall be revealed, speaking of the son of perdition, both in the falling away, those who fell away from that identity, and then a person who is the apex of that, you could say. And it says, And when that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and with the brightness of his appearing. That's through the man-child. That is the day of vengeance of our God, whose coming is after the working of Satan. This man-child, this him coming in the day of vengeance is after the working of Satan. Not according to, as some translations say, but whose coming is after the working of Satan with all signs and lying wonders. I mean, the enemy comes in like a flood with deception. Many fall away and fall back into perdition. And this world man, this, this humanistic, right, comes to its fullness in man. And all signs and lying wonders. Then is when. So that, that's up until the abomination of desolation is the fullness of that deception when he presents himself as Messiah. Whose coming is after, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all signs and lying wonders. This day of vengeance of our God I covered this a little bit ago, but in Malachi, in another video, Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, it says, unto, the, unto you who fear my name, but unto you who fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness, that's a revealing of your righteousness in Christ, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, this healing that is, as you abide under the shadow of his wings, under the throne of Christ at the mercy seat. Your righteousness is there, not what you have done, but by grace are you saved through faith. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And you shall grow up as calves of the stall. And you shall go forth and tread the wicked as ashes under your feet. As ashes under your feet. That which was burnt up by the brightness of your appearing. At the revelation of who people really are being manifested through you, 
What happened to the woman at the well when Jesus encountered her? She came into the fullness of her identity, beginning to see who her redeemed value was, who God created her to be. And you could say the son of perdition was burned up. That false identity was burned up. We are to be rooted and grounded in love. To be rooted in love is to be rooted in mercy. He's going to gather his merciful ones together unto him. If you think it's all about, you know, just killing and... No, he, 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 he's about redemption. He's about bringing desires that none would perish, but all would come to eternal life. What is eternal life? This is eternal life that you may know him. It's oneness coming back into who you were created to be. I'm just touching on this, the day of vengeance of our God, to bring a little bit different perspective of part of what that looks like. So I pray that that helps you, that that opens a revelatory door for Holy Spirit to open greater things of who we were created to be. His love never fails. Shalom, shalom.